As you can imagine, referencing this distribution from our .NET code or any code, honestly, is pretty straightforward. Now we really just have another URL that we can point to our content. So in our case, we change the pointers from either local or S3 resources to CloudFront. And it's pretty straightforward. So I can have different distributions. Now, again, we could have set up different distributions, one that has one sort of content, one that has another, and you would obviously make the corresponding changes in your code to reference maybe different C names that refer to each one. Ideally, you're using versioned object names. So you know, one of the guidance, and we'll talk about in a few moments with best practices, but that you don't just overwrite one copy of a file with another in the origin server, because then you're still stuck waiting for the expiration to happen. So one of the recommended strategies is to use versioned object names and create the appropriate directory structure. Maybe you've got a V1 and a V2 and a V3. However you do it, you could either use a directory structure or even use a naming structure to reference, let's say, new logos and things like that. And we'll do this in a few moments to test it out. But that's one way where you can actually get instant updates. So when I have a new version and I update it in my code and I repush my app, I'm going to instantly start getting the new file, of course, because the first time I reference it, it's not at the edge location. It gets pulled in and served up, and I can at some point retire the old version of the image or the CSS file or video file. What's great is you can also include this in CloudFormation templates. So as you're referencing these distributions and using them as part of your systems in general, you can reference them in the templates. And you can also create and manage these distributions within Visual Studio. So the .NET developer has a lot of things to play with when working with CloudFront. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and change our application to reference the CloudFront endpoint. And then we're also gonna go ahead and do an invalidation to see what that looks like.